Euh, on est avec le contingent québécois de compétiteurs qui seront cette semaine, euh, l'Omnium canadien RBC, euh, Joé Savoie, Marc-Étienne Bussière et Hugo Bernard, euh, qui on, vont prendre quelques questions, peut-être parler un peu euh, juste de… Euh, peut-être on va commencer par Joé. Tiens, euh, toi Joé, c'est ton, ton premier Omnium canadien RBC. Oui, Comment tu te sens? Ben, écoute, moi, je suis super excité. Euh, J'ai l'opportunité avec euh, Golf Canada puis Team Canada d'être, euh, d'avoir une exemption cette semaine. Donc, euh, première fois que je fais un tournoi de la PGA, c'est super excitant. Euh, déjà en trois, trois jours que je suis ici, j'ai déjà, déjà appris beaucoup. Euh, puis, je profite au maximum de l'expérience. Puis, j'ai juste hâte que ça commence. Excellent. Toi, Hugo, euh, c'est pas ton premier coup. C'est ta troisième participation. Tu as manqué la coupe de très, 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 très peu. Euh, la dernière fois. Qu que, comment tu envisages ça euh, cette semaine? Euh, ma partie est bonne. Euh, je joue vraiment bien. Euh, puis je suis pas mal plus relax, plus calme, plus confiant que, que les années d'avant. Donc euh, j'ai beaucoup d'expectations de, euh, euh, cette semaine. Marc-Étienne, euh, un professionnel adjoint au club de golf Longchamp à Sherbrooke. Oui. Euh, toi aussi, c'est ta première participation euh, à l'Omnium canadien. Euh, comment te sens-tu, puis euh, comment t'entrevois ta semaine? Euh, ben, je vais t'avouer que ça faisait quand même un, un certain temps que je savais que j'allais avoir l'exemption. Puis euh, tout au cours de l'hiver, de j'appréhendais ce moment-là. Mais je te dirais que plus la semaine va, puis plus je me sens confortable, plus je me sens bien, puis euh, à mon aise environ dans cet, en, dans cet environnement-ci. Super. Euh, vous avez eu la chance de, de jouer lors du, euh, du programme canadien lundi. Euh, vous avez eu des rondes d'entraînement, une ronde d'entraînement hier. Euh, J'imagine que vous avez euh, fait un peu d'exercice aujourd'hui aussi euh, dans le champ d'exercice. Est-ce euh, qu'il y a des, euh, des défis particuliers, tu penses, qui, qui vous attendent? On peut pas commencer peut-être par jouer. Que, que, quels sont les défis pour toi cette semaine ici? Euh, la, moi, c'est la première fois que je suis à Glen Abbey, donc… Euh les seules expériences que j'ai vues de ce terrain-là, c'était à la télévision. Puis, euh, pour l'instant, j'ai remarqué que c'est plus large que je pensais. Donc, il y a plus, on a plus d'espace à travailler, surtout euh, sur les départs. Euh, je dirais que le, le, le grand défi, c'est peut-être euh, le rough. L'herbe longue est un peu plus longue que ce qu'on est habitué d'habitude. Donc, euh, garder la, la balle dans le, dans le fairway, ça va être super important. Euh, je dirais que c'est une chose que j'ai remarqué. Hugo, je te vois sourire. Euh, les allées sont assez larges? Moi, ouais, me souriez pas pour ça. <rire> mais... <rire> mais les allées sont, les allées sont belles, euh, sont larges, euh, c'est le fun. Mais toi qui es un puissant cogneur, sont elles assez longues? Ah, ils sont, sont assez longues en masse. Il n'y euh, a aucun problème avec ça euh, cette semaine. Puis toi, euh, d'après toi, c'est quoi ton, ça va être quoi ton plus gros défi là, cette semaine? À cause de euh, mais je pense que cette semaine, euh, comparé aux autres années, c'est énormément euh, trempe. Donc, euh, donc, ça rend le terrain pas mal moins euh, avec, euh, avec euh, pas mal moins de défense. Euh, c'est sûr que n'importe où, euh, où du fairway, je pense que je pense que tu n'as pas beaucoup le choix d'essayer de, euh, de jouer vraiment pour la pine cette semaine. Donc, euh, je pense, que, je pense que frapper, euh, frapper la liste, c'est un, euh, un gros plus cette semaine. Ça te garde beaucoup plus en contrôle, surtout, euh, surtout avec la qualité, euh, la qualité des greens qui sont, qui sont soft, mais qui roulent bien. C'est un peu plus facile de faire des potes. Donc, euh, pas mal, euh, pas mal euh, le T-ball va, euh, va être important cette semaine. Et euh, marc étienne toi, ton plus gros défi cette semaine? Euh, ben, je te dirais, c'est sûr que au niveau psychologique, on, est chacun notre, euh, on peut être chacun notre propre ami, notre propre ennemi en même temps. Euh, fait que, côté psychologique, je te dirais de vraiment rester le plus de plus possible euh, dans le moment présent. Euh, si on revient au basic, euh, tout ce qui reste à faire, c'est de mettre la balle sur le tee, la frapper, d'aller au prochain coup, de la frapper encore. C'est un petit peu mon, mon plan de match pour, euh, pour la semaine. Puis à la fin du compte, euh, ça va donner le moins de nombre de coups possible. Euh, François? <rire> Habi <rire> habitude, habitude. Il est toujours. Euh, <rire> je l'ai rarement entendu, <rire> Habitude, habitude. Euh, Moi, qu'est-ce que je dis? Habitude, habitude, c'est deux beaux, deux beaux mots qui suivent, c'est le fun. C'est clair, très clair. Les deux, les deux amateurs, Joey et toi, euh, vous avez en confiance ici. Là, ça, ça change la donne aussi. Tu sais, si l'année était sous so, so mm -hmm. là, c'est pas le cas. Tu sais, Joey, tu, tu joues dans le top 100 mondial amateur. Toi, tu continues de grimper. Tu es rendu quoi? 43e, je pense. Donc, euh, tu n'arrives pas ici en touriste. Là. 
Non, non, euh, comparé aux années d'avant, euh, pas mal plus préparé, plus de confiance. Euh, euh, je sais que je suis capable de faire quoi ici, donc euh, non, je suis pas, j'ai beaucoup de... Euh, ça va être une belle semaine, j'ai hâte. Tu disais tantôt que tu avais des attentes élevées. C'est quoi ces attentes élevées-là? Ben, euh, quatre bonnes rondes. Euh, je trouve ça drôle, le monde. Euh, le monde me parle souvent de euh, 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 faire la cote, faire la cote, faire la cote. Mais euh, si tu rentres, euh, si tu joues 30 tournois pendant l'année sur le PGA et tu fais la cote, euh, tu fais la cote, mais tu fais pas plus, euh, tu retournes sur le web et euh, c'est pas assez. Fait que euh, c'est pas vraiment. Euh, Je suis pas là juste pour faire la cote. J'aimerais ça euh, avoir une bonne semaine. Euh, mon ami Jared il avait fini 9e il y a deux ans. Il avait joué quatre bonnes rondes. T'sais, tu sais jamais ce qui peut arriver quand tu joues quatre bonnes rondes. Euh, c'est pas juste une question de faire la cote puis euh, juste prendre l'expérience. Là. On apprend chaque semaine l'expérience, puis eux autres aussi en prennent encore. Fait que... Mais tu sais, dans, dans le sens qu'il dit aussi, tu sais, des fois, si on. Même chose, moi non plus, c'est mon objectif principal, je te dirais, c'est top 10, évidemment, être réinvité pour euh, l'autre semaine suivante. Mais c'est parce que des fois, si on se donne comme objectif de juste faire la cote, mais tu vas regarder le leaderboard, voir c'est quoi la cote, puis mm-hmm. des fois, le, mm-hmm. mentalement, ça peut faire euh, une différence. Mm-hmm. Euh, si ton objectif n'est pas juste de faire la cote, ben des fois, tu vas jouer peut-être un petit peu différemment. Tu, ça peut te mettre mm-hmm. plus en confiance, ça peut te faire jouer différemment. Euh, donc, je pense que c'est, c'est, c'est une bonne chose de pas juste avoir ce petit objectif-là en tête, mais de viser plus haut aussi en même temps. Toi, Joey? Écoute, euh, moi, je suis très d'accord avec les gars. C'est clair que la coupure, euh, on aimerait la faire. Toutefois, ce n'est pas l'objectif principal. Euh, moi, je pense que, je parle pour moi, je parle pour les gars aussi, si on joue notre game, euh, la coupure, c'est, ça va être un minimum. Donc, euh, on est capable de faire beaucoup mieux. Euh, Il faut le faire, évidemment. Ça va, ça va être très difficile. Toutefois, euh, avec euh, notre talent, notre, notre, notre développement de jeu, notre expérience, euh, même si on est dans un, envir- un environnement nouveau, euh, moi, je pense qu'on est capable de, de faire une très bonne semaine. Tu joues au hockey? Oui. <laughs> you play hockey? <laughs> ben, poke check. Puis, yeah, uh, poke <laughs> check here and there. Tu joues au hockey? Uh, uh, we, got, we got a couple of, uh, of uh, a journalists here from the Otter Solitude, our English language uh, colleagues. Uh, Ian Hodgson is here. Hi, Ian. You talked to Mark last night. We got a, a couple of guys here. Uh, do you guys you, do you want to ask uh, questions? Uh, here we go. Sure. Yeah. Bonjour, bienvenue à Glen Abbey. <laughs> nice to to my French. Uh, Hello. Um, you're, you're three of 21 Canadians in, in the field this week. Would you mind discussing how important it is for you to be representing the French Canadian you know, population in, in, in Canada for the game of golf? And then can you comment as well on the camaraderie between um, your, your Golf Canada teammates? You know, the good thing about speaking French with our fellow Canadians, we can say a bunch of stuff behind their back and they will never know what we said. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that's how, how close we can be with our Canadian buddies. But, but, you know, we're all a big family out there. You know, we cheer for each other uh, as Canadians. But as Quebec, you know, we just that, have that extra uh, sort of a cultural uh, spirit bond um so you know having three quebec guys here is uh is a trail you know i don't know how many o- often it happened probably uh, pretty more often than we think I but uh, exactly the last time that it happened there were three quebecois on, in the field was 98. 98 well there you go 20 uh, years 98. uh 98 uh 97 and then two, two years in a row they had four and uh the uh, biggest first was three thousand dollars in this Well, wow. I, the good thing, though, is that somebody did make the cut, <laughs> <laughs> well, which, which was, I think, 99, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Stéphane Talbot. Uh, yeah, yeah, last one. Uh, uh, Craig Matthews. 01. Stéphane Talbot. Yeah. yeah. I think it was 96, 97. Yeah. But yeah. it's been, uh, essentially, it's, been, it's yeah. been quite a while, and that's why we wanted to make a little mm-hmm. bit of noise about it. Cause then we and fun fact, my, my uncle played 12 times this uh, The Canadian Open, Jean Louis Lamar. Oh, Jean Louis Lamar. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right. but he told me if you make the cut once, you already beat my record. So, <laughs> <laughs> I got something to cheer for. <laughs> he's 12 and 0. He's, tw- he's 0 and 12. 0 and 12. Mark, too. I didn't ask you this last night, Mark, but with the uh, uh, situation with the Quebec PGA, 
uh, coming back on, you know, everything's kind of coming together for it now. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's building back up. It's uh, yeah. it's nice to see that our association hasn't completely died. Uh, you know, thankfully, Golf Canada, I mean, not Golf Canada, the PGF of Canada helped us out while we were uh, down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but now it's coming back alive, and it's good to see that we have a pretty strong association. You know, all the professionals from Quebec, uh, they want we want our own association and we want to thrive through it too so it's nice to see it uh, coming back yeah well it's beyond that um, I, I mean Quebec really I mean you know we joke about not making the cut and that kind of thing but by the same token I mean Quebec has a history of some strong play um, you know and PGA and you guys uh, amateur um, you know, there's there's been a lot of really good Quebec. I think we just need Quebec. more and more opportunities. That's yeah. it. You know, if, uh, I think that's the only thing right now. Just more opportunities, uh, and I'm for sure for sure some something's gonna happen. Yeah, which which you know it goes back again to, you know, finding, you know, with the association having more opportunity yeah. to play and more opportunity to play tournaments. Exactly. And, you know, and plus you've got um, the. What do they call the circuit? Uh, circuit do circuit kind of pro tour. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's that yeah. Things have changed a lot about that. Uh, yeah, uh, it's completely different. <laughs> we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> oh, oh, is that? Oh, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Didn't mean to bring that up. Then. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. You know, it's a yeah. great, it's a great circuit. Uh, yeah. It's it's ran. You know, things have happened in the past yeah. with the association and the, the tournament yeah. side. Uh, but I think now things are uh, are split. And yeah. everyone is evolving in their own uh, in their own direction, okay. and it's fine that way. Yeah. Well, the upside being is that there's more. Yeah. Opportunity to play, I guess is. Yeah, more right. opportunities to play, but it's uh, it's 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 what you would call a satellite mm -hmm. circuit. Sure. So, sure. You know, you can play, you can gain experience playing through there, and you mm -hmm. can you know you can earn a bit of money. Right. But then it doesn't really open up. Yeah. You know. Uh, it's like gambling, see, right? Yeah, a little bit. But then what we see as far as uh, opportunities, you know, it does open up. You know, a little bit of an opportunity for the Mac on the Mackenzie Tour. Sure. Uh, I don't know if it'll go any further than that. You know, right. the PGF Canada opens up an event. You know, opens up a spot for us mm -hmm. on this. So this is big. Uh, you know, hopefully in the future, we would like to see a few more. Uh, that would definitely be helpful yeah. for uh, her, her province. Yeah, I guess. I guess my question is for all three of you: um, Does that legacy? You know, I mean, we talk about the history of Canadian golf. Uh, you know, we saw it with the Hall of Fame Day yesterday. Um, you know, so we talked about the history of Canadian golf uh, with the Hall of Fame Day yesterday. Does the history of Quebec golf? ring the same for you guys uh, i guess is what i'm asking uh in in what in what sense i mean do you carry that with you is is it is it in your heart you know the uh, yeah i would say i mean i guess we're we're part of it now <laughs> yeah yeah uh you know we know a little bit of what what the players in their past done we all know the stories about daniel talbot walking off at milby and all those things and uh you know they're 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 a little bit older now, but we still can see sure. all their achievement that they've done and their uh, the legends. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, well, I, yeah, I'd like okay. to add up on that. You know, uh, well, we're Canadian first, and then sure. uh, Quebec. You know, I, I don't know for all Fair of them, enough, but yeah. and but you know, my my one of my favorite player growing up or was Mike Weir. You know, so I'll always okay. cherish yeah. that. You know, so we all have the sort of Canadian bonds. Uh, sure. It's not because we we're from Quebec that we are not Canadians, and we. We just love uh, love our Canadian golf. We all heard plenty of stories about Mo Norman yeah. sure. playing the game, or sure. you know, we have a, a great designer, uh, Graham Cook, which is you know famous in Canada. So, yeah. uh, you know, we all cherish uh, our Canadian legends yeah. with us. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. I used to. Yeah, there I played go. with plenty of Oki wedges. So yeah. there you go. Absolutely, that's a Quebec. Yeah. Right there. So, no, I, th I think uh, basically, I mean, even here in Ontario, I mean, you know. I mean, you start up, you you play for Golf Ontario, yeah. Golf Ontario here, and then, you know, you, you know, in the case of Marquette, yeah, you know, you, you move on to the PGA, and mm -hmm. you know, and and hopefully you move on to, you know, something that's put up by Golf Canada, or yeah. you know, it, you go from a provincial to a national level, I guess is what I'm saying. So, mm -hmm. you know, so I think you can carry that that Canadian thing, but still carry Quebec as well, and uh, or any province that, for that matter, you mm -hmm. know, because you've got that. That real yeah, uh, 
I think we're not the only one, you know, from, from Saskatchewan. I'm Absolutely. pretty sure Graham Delette plays for Canada. And Bingo. Then he represents his, uh, yeah. his, uh, his province and, you know, his hometown, basically. Yeah. It's, I know. think it's the same for all of us. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Uh, oh. A special guest, Bingo. Megan Gardner from the Gulf Canada Museum and Hall of Fame. It was, it was great to hear, you know, so many of the names that we – honor in our hall of fame mentioned obviously mo graham um mike um but actually i have a playing question um so hugo you're the only one who is playing with a canadian tomorrow um it, how do you is that going to um help you um and for the rest of you you're not playing with canadians so do you think that that's going to sort of hinder your play at all well, I know uh, I know Adam. Uh, we played together this winter in Florida. Uh, super nice guy, uh, very good player. The guy is going to be on the PGA Tour next year. So uh, it's at the end of the day. I mean, we're just playing uh, basically for us, you know. Just uh, I'm just going to play my games. He's going to play his game. Uh, it's going to be fun, though. But uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we have a good time there. Puis vous, euh, les gars, vous sentez euh, comment par rapport aux draws que vous avez eu pour demain? Est-ce que c'est des joueurs que vous connaissiez? Uh, I don't personally like, uh, I mean, I don't personally know. That's me. Sorry. You hate them, man. Hein? 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 I don't personally know the guys that I'm playing with. Uh, but I'd say most of the time, whenever you, you're playing with your competitors, uh, you know, you're still playing your own game. I'd say the one thing that can make a difference, sometimes when you're playing with them and they play good, then it forces you to play, you kind of feed on each other and then keep on playing better and better. Uh, so actually, I just wish the best for my, uh, my uh, opponents tomorrow, and hopefully I can feed on that too as well. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Uh, Joey? Well, you know, I've I personally never heard of those guys, so it's Encore not. En it, there's no. Hein? Encore okay. en français. En anglais ou en français? En français. Okay. <laughs> ben, honnêtement, moi, j'ai jamais entendu parler des gars jouer avec. Fait que, euh, mais en même temps, c'est du golf. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a? Un est argentin. Ouais. Donc, c'est vrai. C'est vrai. Donc, on va pouvoir jaser des cultures. Euh, toutefois, non, mais pour vrai, je, je, jouer une game de golf, c'est une game de golf. Donc, peu importe avec qui tu joues, euh, ça ne fera pas une grosse différence. Peut-être que si je jouais avec une personne, peut-être qui était plus connue sur, euh, ou plus d'expérience sur le, sur le circuit, euh, il y aurait peut-être plus de monde qui regarderait. Mais en bout de ligne, la partie reste la même. Donc, euh, Okay. Uh, I have a I'm going to ask a question in English because uh, I know our friends from sports and that just joined us. Uh, uh, Marc Etienne, this is your fir first PGA event. Yep, it is. Um, what, what, what kind of, uh, you know, it w based on your performance, uh, how do you see this uh, turning out for you? Like, is this the beginning of something huge? Like, how do you feel about this? Uh, obviously, I hope so. <laughs> uh, I hope it's uh, not my last one. Obviously, the first one is always... Uh, you know you're breaking the ice uh so it's a lot of a new experience as far as uh you know getting used to getting in the parking lot with your pass and everybody walking around and, and where do you go what do you do uh but it's uh I've, i've enjoyed everything so far and i think i'm pretty much ready for uh pretty much ready for tomorrow and for the whatever is to come yeah right on um ask you adult question any uh, other questions okay here watch Mark, uh, back to you. Um, as far as your teaching goes, yep. um, teaching the game, what does this mean to you as far as, I don't know, something to hang your your I license on that. with? <laughs> yeah, you know, that, I mean, does this draw more people into you? Um, uh, obviously, you know, I, uh, on Monday the 30th, I got a couple lessons booked already, so. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Are these new lessons? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no kidding, yeah, I've, I obviously have had a uh, a lot of demand lately uh i haven't been able to say yes to everybody because i knew i had to save some time for my own practice sure. uh, so sometimes it's hard for that but obviously i'd say the more i've been teaching uh, you know it's one way to swing the golf club and know your swing by for your own self uh, but then when you teach it to others it's it's also completely differently yeah. it's all completely different but then again i would say Sometimes you see something that someone's doing and then it makes you think about things that you're doing. And I would say some people have told me, oh, I don't like to teach too much because it messes my own swing. But I would say it's helped mine probably a little bit. Oh, okay. You know, more understanding of how, uh, how things go. Uh, you know, just for example, uh, you know, 
let's say, let's say relaxing on a Wednesday evening, I'm not going to go and play like badminton or squash. I've seen a lot of players that come to me. Uh, some of them spend a whole, spend a whole winter playing badminton in the gym, comes back to play golf, can't play golf. He's a lefty, plays badminton with the right hand, goes like this all the time. So now he's starting to hit balls on the range and goes like this and screwed up his whole game. So, uh, you know, just that's just one little thing. But then again, it can like it can change your, your muscle reaction. And so just one little thing from teaching that you that teaches me, teaches me something. So you, you, you actually learn from your students as much as they learn from you then? I hope they'll learn more from me than I learn <laughs> from them. <laughs> a <laughs> little yeah, bit, I a do. little bit. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but, yeah, I do, I do learn from them as well. Okay. And I, I mean, is this a good ticket for you for, I mean, going forward, the fact that you've played in the PGA Tour event now, um, mm -hmm. is that going to mean anything as far as advertising goes or, or getting the message out to students? Or charging more for a lesson? Uh, or charging more. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm in the eastern townships right. uh, in Sherbrooke, so the market there is a little bit different than certainly is in Toronto. Right. I know, I know some of my colleagues uh, the price that they charge, and I'm like, I would never be able to charge that in <laughs> in Quebec. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I I won't change the the amount that I charge. It's a you know, I give my clients uh, a a good service. I like to offer them at a reasonable price at the same time. Uh, but it's just uh, I like I like teaching. You know, the the one thing I like the most is uh, basically when you see the good reaction that people are are having whenever they they know how to hit the ball. And then sometimes I see I see a client that comes in, just you know, let's say not horrible golf swing, but then you know a couple a couple lessons, and then he's gonna hit hit it much further. And I tell him ahead of time, like you know, I've seen through two or three things, and I'll be like, I'll be. In two lessons, you're gonna hit at least 30 yards further, and they're like, "No way!" And then they start swinging the ball, and all of a sudden, boom! And they're like, "Oh my God! Did I just do that?" <laughs> and you know, I think that's that's a good. Uh, it's a pretty good feeling to teach that to others and make them realize what they their own potential, what they can do. Right on. Well, if there's uh, no more questions, uh, I'm gonna thank you guys. Merci les gars uh, de nous voir. On vous souhaite uh, super bonne chance jeudi matin, puis on. Si. On est là pour la fin de semaine pour vous encourager. Yes, merci.